Welcome to the Palestine Church audio podcast. We hope you enjoy this message by Pastor James Warren. For more great content and updates from Palestine Church, please visit us at palestinechurch.com. Hey, open your Bibles with me to Romans chapter 5. While you're turning there to Romans chapter 5, um, I'm really excited to share with you this morning. Uh, I had, uh, I'm starting to almost want to give up with God on preparing messages weeks in advance because uh, Tuesday night when we were at our core group, the Lord just began to speak to me um, about this particular subject, and so, uh, which I'm more than happy to yield to. Um, but I, I, I bring you this this morning because I, I feel that this is really going to be a timely word for a lot of people in this body. I was thinking about life and just the, just the intensity of life sometimes. I mean, I guess it depends. You know, each, each generation has their own story about how difficult life is. And, uh, you know, I know maybe you've sat around with your grandfather or grandmother and, you know, they talk to you about walking to school every day in the snow, up hills both ways, there and back, and, you know, and back when I was that age, we did it, you know. I've had these conversations with my grandfather all the time and about how tough they were. But each generation, for sure, has its own challenges, has its own stresses, if you will. And, I, you know, it's like, what, what do you do? What do you do with the pressures of life? What do you do with the stresses of life? And, and I guess my question, as I think about the stresses of life, uh, how many of those stresses are good stresses? And how many are uh, useless, pointless stresses in my life? Because I don't believe that we can live life without pressure. Because pressure is necessary in making beautiful things. And God's intention for our life is not for us to be comfortable and always just feeling good all the time. But that God actually has a a purpose for our lives. And I was thinking about the purposes that, and the things that God uses in our lives to create his purposes. Turn with me there in Romans chapter 5, and we want to look at these five verses that will help us understand what to do with the pressures of life. Are you with me? Are you there? If you're there, say amen. Okay, good. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's just pause right there for a moment. In this, the context here in chapter 5, Paul has been writing to the church the believers there, in the Roman believers. And he starts off his, his letter to them really explaining the, the human condition, the problem we have as humans, which is, is, is sin. And he leads us out of that into the solution, which is Jesus. But, but he shows us in chapter 3 and chapter 4 that our justification comes by faith in Jesus. And I love what Pastor Daniel was uh, sharing just a second ago because, and even Pastor Troy over there, um, Paul is, is telling these people that we are declared innocent by God, not because of our works, not because of something that we could earn, not because we lived a life that was good enough to be justified, but that we actually stood on trial. This word justification is like a legal term. We stood on trial before God and we were found guilty. 
But God declared us innocent through the payment of his son for our lives and for our freedom. So we are justified by faith in Jesus. And because of this, because of this, this justification, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now this word peace is interesting. In the, in the Greek, it means to join. So it's not that this is, the context of this verse is not saying that we have peace in like that God has calmed the storm in our life, but that we have actually been joined with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. It's, it's actually like a, like a dovetail joint, that we've actually been intertwined and, and joined with God through this belief and the justification by faith. So we have peace with God. Let's go on. Through him, we also have obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance. Excuse me, let me read it out of this. Suffering produces endurance. And endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not, disapp- does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. Amen. Amen. Paul, as he so often does, puts us in this this tension. He keeps this tension in his writings of what has already been done, but then what needs to be done in our lives. You see, Paul is putting us right in the middle of this, this thing of something that's already been paid for, but is also in production. Everything that the Bible says that you have and can have is yours. Because Jesus has already paid the price for everything. And so the payment is taken care of. Um, But just because it's paid for doesn't mean that the production is complete in your life and in mine. And so we find ourselves right in this moment where Paul is showing us the beauty of of what Jesus has accomplished by by coming to the earth, living, dying, and being raised again. And he has paid for, what we see here, is that he has paid for peace, access, grace, and hope. Peace, as we just said, is the, the joining of you and God, the intertwining this relationship, this connection now that you are joined with God. Access. That we have obtained access. What does that mean? It means that we can now boldly, as it says in Hebrews, enter in with confidence the throne of God. That means that we can, we can enter into the most secret places of God. We, can, we have access into God's heart that we did not have before. I always, you guys have heard this story before, but I always think of access like this. Access to me is like my three-year-old daughter busting in our room at night, just pushing the door wide open and crawling up in our bed. She has access to the most inner holy place of our house. But she confidently kicks the door open and walks in and pushes me off the bed and crawls up the... I mean, I'm not frustrated about it. But she has, 
She has access and she knows it. You and I, did you know that we have access to God? Amen. Into Amen. the holy of holies with God. There's no place in God that you can't go. Yeah. Through Jesus, you've been given access. Then he says that we would stand in his grace. And it's because of grace that we have all of this. But God created us to stand in his grace. It's not just the grace that we received on the day of your salvation. It's the grace, it's the empowering grace to operate in God's divine favor every day of your life. Jesus paid for that. The bill's been taken care of. And then he says that we have hope. We have hope in the glory of of God. The hope. Now then right after that, I mean, Paul says that we can rejoice that we have this hope. This hope that never fades and never goes away. But then right after that, he says, hey, but also, we we have something else. We can rejoice in our sufferings. What? (laughs) Rejoice in our sufferings. Now, the literal translation of this word in the Greek, sufferings, is pressure. That we rejoice in our pressures. Knowing that that pressure produces endurance. I want to talk to you about pressure. Because I, I... if your life's anything like mine, we, we have moments of our lives where the pressures of life can, can really weigh on us. They can push on us, and we can feel stress at work, stress at home, in relationships, things that we're going through, things that we're facing, the challenges of life begin to press on us. And, and more times than not, we, we look for an escape from pressure because something inside of us wants to just have relief and be comfortable but sometimes in life many times in life God allows pressures to remain in our life because there's something that he wants to produce God wants to produce something in our lives. There's, this, there's these things that have been paid for that are true, but sometimes when we look at our life, it's not true yet in our lives. But Paul shows us that there's actually a pathway to God producing hope in our lives, and it's through the pressure of life. That God uses the pressure of, the li- of our lives to produce endurance and that endurance to produce character and then the character to produce hope. And then once we have hope, he says this hope will never disappoint us. It will never put us to shame. Because... Why? God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who's been given to us. The goal of God in your life is to produce Christ-like character and hope and love and actually the oozing oil of the Holy Spirit all over your life. I was thinking about pressure, and this morning I wanted to bring, you guys know I don't do a lot of illustrations, but I didn't bring my wine press, so I figured I'd do oil this morning. You know, many times we we look at our lives and it's so important that we know that there is an end goal 
and that God has a purpose in our lives. And when Paul is talking about what Jesus has paid for, he's always talking about what God intends for us. When we think of everything that Jesus has paid for, that's the final product of our life completely submitted to Jesus. And it's important that you know the final product because we need to have a goal. We need to have something to aim for. And this is what God wants in your life. Oil. He wants oil. What does that mean? Most of you know this, but oil is so much uh, referenced to in the Bible is really a, a picture of the Holy Spirit. Um, you see that in the Old Testament, they would anoint people, prophets and kings with oil. They would pour the oil on them. And actually, you know, the first scripture that Jesus read as he was going to begin his ministry, he says that the Lord has anointed me. As he was quoting Isaiah, the Lord has anointed me to do this. And that anointing is, is showing that the Holy Spirit was on Jesus to do, to carry out his purpose, what God had purposed for his life. And God intends the same thing for each believer, that we would be anointed with the oil of the Holy Spirit to carry out the purpose and the destiny that he has on each one of our lives. But sometimes, oh no, we're still in this stage. And the question is, what does it take to get from olive to olive oil? And I'm learning in life that it's so important the crushing and the the pressure in making good olive oil. And in this scripture, we see that Paul talks about the pressing that's necessary in our lives to produce a love, love love-filled, God pouring out his love on our lives, God pouring out the oil of his Holy Spirit on our lives. And I want to tell you this, that the Holy Spirit being poured out in your life is not only for your sake. As we talked about last week, that your yes is actually tied to other people. Your yes to Holy Spirit, your feeling of being filled with the Holy Spirit and submitting to to God's, God's ways actually is there are lives that are at stake. And so it's so important that we see the process necessary, the pressure necessary that has to occur to make the olive into olive oil. Now, I'm not going to sit here and do this all morning, but it's an illustration. And they don't use this in real life. And aren't you glad God presses and doesn't beat us? a different sermon for a different day. But the pressure sometimes that I I like to resist, I'm always looking to escape this pressure. But the pressure, when applied over and over again, and when given to the process, will end up with pure oil. And this is God's intention for your life. That his oil will be poured on your life. That your life will be completely covered in his oil. Now, you should be asking a question here. How do I know when pressures are... God pressures or my pressures or the world's pressures? Which pressures should I avoid? Which pressures in my life should I resist? And, and truthfully, we've all made decisions, some good, many, many were bad. And I want to tell you this. 
Actually, every, every pressure that you submit to God, God will use. Everything in your life that you, that you give to God, yeah. he uses. I was re- researching on the, the production of these, this olive oil, and I was amazed at how many twigs they leave in there, leaves. They don't just, just put the olives in there. And that's just like God's process of pressing in our lives. There's things that we do and we, that we regret and we think, God, I don't, I don't put that in the mix. But God, in his amazing sovereignty, will use everything in our lives and put it into his press and use the pressures of life to press out what he's after, which is pure oil. Now, the problem happens in this production in our life when we actually begin to resist, (laughs) when we resist the pressing. And, and, And the key, I guess, if you will, to having God produce oil in your life is surrender. It means that you have to, to give up. And we, there's many ways to think of, there's several ways to think of surrender, but uh, you can think of the white flag like you're captured. But I like to think of surrender in this context of, of sitting in a river I don't know if you've ever been in the mountains and played or swam in a river, like an actual river, not like, you know, the Trinity River or something. I mean, like a mountain river where there's an actual current. And, and, and you, can, you can sit there or stand there, but you have to plant your feet because the natural flow of the river is to go down the mountain. And to me, surrender is like lifting your feet. And just going with the flow that God has initiated in your life. God wants to produce this character, this hope inside of you that doesn't disappoint. He wants that for your life. He intends that for your life. Many times we just need to let go and just go with the current, surrender to the current of what God is doing in our lives. There's a verse in Colossians chapter 3. Uh, you don't have to turn there, but he, uh, Apostle Paul is, is writing to the Colossians and he's telling them to put on the things. He, he says, put on godliness. And he, he goes all the way and he uh, goes to the top of the mountain with, above all these, put on love which binds everything together in perfect (laughs) harmony. And then he says, and let, everybody say let, Let. and let the peace of Christ rule in your life, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be be thankful. And then he says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom. Let, let, make Strive, get the peace. No, just let the peace of God flow in your life. Let the natural state of you surrender to God is for his word to start dwelling in you richly. His peace to just begin to flow in your life richly. It's not something that we earn. It's just the natural flow of God's love towards you. It's the natural process that he's doing in your life. He's creating He's producing endurance through your pressures, through the pressures of your life. And endurance is like, like you know where you're going and you've found your stride and, and you're just going. You're consistent. Actually, the translation is you are cheerfully constant. That's what the Greek word means. That's endurance. It's like you know the right thing to do, and you just do it. The pressures in your life will produce that. And then once you do that, then then 
it produces character in, in your life, which is built into your DNA. You don't, you don't have to think about what's right and wrong. You just know that you know and you do it because of the character. And then after character comes hope. And hope that does not put us to shame. Are you, are you full of hope this morning? Are you, I mean, do you look at every situation through a lens of hope? Has, has God pressed in your life or used the pressures of life to produce in you endurance and character and now hope so that every situation you see, you see through a lens of God's love and Holy Spirit being poured out in your life? Or are you like me sometimes when I'm like, I just want to stop and fight the current? There's a paradigm shift that needs to happen when we think about the pressures of our life. If we're, if we're giving this to God, we've got to see this key word here that he says in verse 3. Not only that, but we rejoice in our suffering. We rejoice in the pressures of life. It means that we're no longer going to complain about the pressures of our life. You can't rejoice and complain at the same time. <laughs> we have to find joy in the pressures that, that our life has. Because our tendency is to want to resist the process, to resist the pressing. But we need to rejoice in our suffering. James 1, chapter 4. It says, And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. There's some of you here this morning, some of the pressures of your life, you feel like they're crushing you. And maybe they are. And I'm saying, maybe that's what God wants. It's not that he's crushing you because he's mad at you. It's not that he's allowing these pressures in your life because he wants you to be disappointed. But that God wants to create hope inside of you a hope that won't put you to shame. Amen. Amen. Now there's some pressures in your life that you're, maybe you're like, man, I know this is not God because I'm not living in this place that he has called me to live, which is peace, access, grace, and hope. It's like, God, I'm giving this up today. It's yours. Use it how you want, God. Yeah. And in that, God is going to produce something amazing in you. Why don't you stand this morning? I want to pray for you.